In today's episode, we're going to begin looking at features provided by Sidekick Enterprise. The first feature we're going to cover is periodic jobs. You can think of periodic jobs like cron or recurring jobs. You can register jobs with a schedule on startup and Sidekick will guarantee that they get started at the appropriate time and are not duplicated. Let's get started. We're using the Sidekick Batches project. Uh, it's been tagged with before episode 005.2. So first we're gonna enable Sidekick Enterprise. So we're gonna come here and instead of Sidekick Pro, we're going to say Sidekick ENT and we'll install it with bundle. Okay, so now we're going to define our first periodic job. So we'll clear the screen. First, we're gonna make a worker that just outputs with puts. So we'll open up app workers puts worker and just define it really quickly. Then we'll configure the periodic jobs in Sidekick's initializer. So we're gonna open up config initializer sidekick.rb and I'm going to just call sidekick. Oops, don't need that to be a comment. We'll configure the server. And we'll set periodic to something and we get this manager back. And if you wanna know how these arguments work, well, first off, uh, mgr.register is how you register a periodic job. And then you pass it a cron tab string. We'll come back to that. We want the puts worker to run on this schedule. It will retry twice and it'll go into the default queue, which as you might guess is the default, but you can specify a queue that way and I wanted to call it out. And so inside here, and I'll just use single, single ticks, uh, we're gonna use cron tab syntax. If you're not familiar with it, uh, you can read up on it anywhere and this will you know, adhere to that syntax. If you didn't need options, you don't have to define them, right? So you can just do this, but we will leave this. And in general, this is the same as this. So register some cron expression, some worker class, and then some job options. Okay, so we're gonna start Sidekick and see how this works. So I'll make a new tab. Okay, so we're gonna start Sidekick. And we can see a few things. So we can see first off that it is managing one periodic job. You can see that we're running Sidekick Enterprise. And so the job we defined is going to run the puts worker uh, every minute. So it went ahead and enqueued it for a given time. Oh, sorry, actually it already ran once. I wasn't even paying attention. Right, so it ran one minute after start, uh, roughly. Actually, it looks like 29 minutes after start because it runs actually on the minute, not uh, every minute from the beginning time because that's how cron works. You specify an actual timestamp. So it ran there and then it's gonna run again next minute. So it ran on 16 after the hour and it'll do this every single minute. And Sidekick Enterprise will just manage this for us. So we don't have to think about it. We just describe the sort of the cron tab uh, description of the schedule we want them to run on and they just happen. Okay, so I'll leave this running and let's talk about time zones. So the times in your cron statements are going to be based on the system time zone. If you want to specify a different time zone, you can pass it as the TZ environment variable. So uh, I will go ahead and kill Sidekick and show you an example. So we could say TZ equal America Los Angeles and then Sidekick. And that would specify that time zone. Anyway, so we saw periodic jobs being worked and coming out. I'm going to have sped up the video so it won't have actually taken a minute between them, but you can see on the timestamps that that's when it happened. Okay, so something you can do with this and that, that comes up fairly often is you might want to run dynamic jobs. So you wanna use the scheduler, but let a user uh, create their own jobs and sort of specify the job that they want run. So there's an easy way to do this. So you can create a migration, we'll call it create dynamic jobs and we'll open it up. And I'll just put a table definition. We don't need to talk through it. And so this is basically it. I'm going to take these away. This would be, for instance, if you wanted to track multi-tenancy or you needed some kind of security uh, checks. So I'm not going to do that because we're gonna do something very basic. And so we'll do that and we'll make a new worker. And I'm going to just copy and paste uh, this from the script. You can, uh, we can talk through it. Okay, so what it does is finds each dynamic job that should run sometime in the future. And 
it will push that job. But we don't need an account ID or a user ID, so I'm actually going to just uh, not put that bit in there. Um, so we'll push the job with the Sidekick client, and then we will parse the cron, and we will update the next runtime for the job. So hope that's clear. Basically, this is going to manage this list of dynamic jobs that someone has defined, and it keeps track of when they should run next so that they're not all on their own cron. And so then you would have your initializer for Sidekick. You could, I'm going to take away the puts worker. Actually, I'll leave the puts worker. But you could imagine just doing this, right? Dynamic job worker. And so now every minute, this is going to check that table and put in the jobs that are specified in the active record uh, model. I'm not really concerned with running this, but just wanted to show it off. So there are a couple of limitations. Uh, so I'll get rid of this and I'm actually going to remove that database migration and remove the worker, the dynamic job worker. Anyway, but I just wanted to show uh, that example. So a couple of limitations. You can only schedule jobs with one minute granularity if you're using the periodic jobs feature just as is. If you wanted to build something with different granularity, you can try to do it on top of the leader election feature and I've linked to that in the resources uh, with custom code, or you could run a job that spawns a job 30 seconds later to run on the minute. Um, so if you wanted to run something explicitly at 30 seconds after every minute, you could have a job that, you know, either slept for 30 seconds, which is not what I would do, or spawned a job that should start in 30 seconds uh, when this cron tab fires. It's also worth noting that Sidekick doesn't support uh, backfilling jobs. So it doesn't backfill jobs if it wasn't running during a period that a job was supposed to have. So uh, if your Sidekick wasn't running and this said, hey, every minute we should have put out that ZOMG string and we shut down Sidekick for a day and started back up, it's not going to run sort of those backfill jobs that it missed. Uh, so that's not how this works in case anyone might've thought it was. Um, you can solve this by having your jobs handle everything that should have been done since the last run, rather than assume that you had some guarantee that it ran on the hour every hour precisely, as an example. So if you had an hourly report, uh, the job itself should actually check to make sure that uh, all of the hourly reports until this one have been run. And if they haven't been, it can just run the ones that it missed and that way it'll catch up. All right, so there's also API support. So we can open up the console and we can list our periodic jobs. So I will say sidekick periodic loop set dot new. And so here are our loops. And so I can say loops dot each. Um, I call this a lop in the script. I'm just going to go with that. And so we can print out uh, some, some values off of this. So we could just uh, lop dot inspect. Probably is easier than printing out all the individual values. Uh, except for no, because that's, uh, that's how it does that. So we'll, we'll print the schedule, the class, the loop ID, the options, and the history for each loop. And so here we see that we have a puts worker scheduled every minute. This is the loop ID. Here are the options. And this is the history of it running. So it ran a couple of times when we were there before. And that's nice. And the actual inspect value of the loop is the loop ID. All right, so you can also see these schedules in the web UI. So let's go ahead and kill this. And I'm going to, I believe I have Firefox open. I do. We don't need it yet. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that we've uh, mounted the enterprise version of the web interface. We probably have not. So we really want to just change that to sidekick dash ENT web. Everything else stays the same. And so we can run the server. And now if we visit in the browser at localhost 3000, uh, sorry, slash sidekick, we can see uh, what's scheduled, uh, which is not what I'm looking for. So we want to look at cron. So here we can see our cron tab. And we can sort of dig into this particular periodic job. And we can see those same details. But in the web interface, we can see the history of this job this is really nice. You see exactly when it ran and what the job ID was in case you needed to look something up in a log. All right, so that's periodic jobs in Sidekick Enterprise. We saw how to schedule them and see the list of scheduled jobs and their history. 
We saw an example of how you can do dynamic scheduled jobs if you need to provide that to your users. And we learned their limitations. There's detail on the wiki walking through how you can provide the dynamic job scheduling uh, if you wanted to look into more detail. And anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.